welcome to the second callback on that Bon walk-in uh, cooler. We did install this. So here, uh, I'm probably scrolling too fast for it, but this is the all the things you can find in the controller. Uh, it's Intelligent by Heatcraft. So basically, they called us out and it was already at 70 degrees when I got there in the box. Uh, it was not cooling. It, they said it had iced up, but it melted by the time we got there. Now I'm just checking everything in the controller here because I want to diagnose it. And I wasn't getting any pressure on my suction side. Uh, so basically we had something that was closed off. Now I, I at first was checking for voltage to my valves or my EEV. And I was looking for uh, continu continuous voltage because I thought it was something that had to be supplied power to be on and, and then taken uh, away power to be off. Over on uh, Instagram, uh, Accolade Mechanical was the one that actually mentioned because he saw my story about this. And it's a pulse voltage. So you get a quick voltage. In my case, it was like 30 volts uh, to activate the valve. And then it can take away the voltage and leave it in whatever position it was or put it in. And then when it wants to close it, or whatever you it sends another pulse of that voltage to move it again up or like uh, open or close so here i got into i think i got into service mode uh the pin is all nines if you need to get into these controllers and uh, i had to take off a screw and take off the connector because there's pins on the eev or exv it's labeled exv in the controller but it's an electronic expansion valve uh, I had to use these uh, Molex adapters for my field piece. They came with my meter. They're the really thin ones because the uh, connector is uh, very tiny. And I'm checking for my voltage here. Like I said, it's, it's a pulse. So we did a uh, test mode in the controller. And what that does is it gives you, uh, it goes through one by one each relay and it does, it's like on and off of each relay in sequence and it has to run three times and then it'll shut off. So with that, I'm only concerned with the EV because I have something that's closed off and not giving me a uh, refrigerant to my evaporator. So I'm basically just diagnosing that valve. That's the only valve that's there. Uh, everything else seemed to be working, fans and everything. So we're doing a test mode. I'm letting it run a couple times. Um, there's also a service mode that I used here. Uh, if you ever need to do anything and have the power just killed by the controller, uh, fans and everything included, you can you can go into service mode and it will do it for you if you don't want to like shut off breakers or anything. So I use that too. And I almost misdiagnosed this because I was going to condemn the board. Um, like I said, I thought it was a continuous voltage, but it's a pulse. So I went and diagnosed it again. I had a feeling it would have been a valve just because, uh, you know, when you have issues like that, you want to replace your solenoid uh, and check for restrictions. So that's what I was leaning towards. I had a really hard time believing it was the whole board. And if you look on the, um, manual because i have the manual and you can just google the intelligent manual and you'll find it that's a good thing about everything nowadays you can just google it and it's usually one of the first uh search results that you have there i pulled it up on my phone and it does have the voltage 17 to 30 or 35 that you get when it calls for the valve now when i read it i read you should get this voltage when it turns on or off I didn't read it as like only when it turns on at that second, you get this voltage and not after that. So I didn't read it the way it should have been read. And um, that's why I kind of didn't know at first and we got it resolved. And on there, it'll tell you across which pins uh, you need to check. So you just have to correspond that to the connector because the connector is on there and it shows you on the valve, the label of the pins. So when you remove it, you just uh, have to note which part of the connector goes to which pin and you check across two. 
there's four pins you check across two for the voltage and then another set of two for the voltage again and yeah uh let's get on with the repair all right so i gotta go back to that intelligent uh that customer the supplier that sold them the, the equipment send out the parts i needed the electronic expansion valve it's stuck closed i know they usually give you the coil and the body valve so we'll see i'm gonna see if the coil is the issue or if it's the actual valve and we'll change out whatever we need and we'll see how it goes all right so this is what they sent me oh they sent me the board too i think it's just our valve though stupid mask it's a connector Yeah, when they send it to you, it's the body, the valve, and the coil. I'm actually going to see if it's just the coil that I'm having issues with. Take the little nut off. Take the coil off. Take this off. And remember how it goes because the uh, pins are important. Let's do that. And then the little nut on top. Okay. I'm gonna try that first. Let me mark this so I don't get confused. See. I think I'm going to run a test on it. Surprisingly, we have 22. Either the way the system's charged, it should have way more than that. So let's do our test mode. Execute. And I'm just gonna pay attention when it's EXV and it's on, I need pressure. So it's gonna go through all the relays. After the fan, it should kick in my expansion valve. And I'm hoping I get pressure. Test mode runs three cycles, so I gotta wait for that too. And it's, if it does work, and then we'll turn it back on. There's the fans.
one of the next ones should be my test, my expansion. Hoping it works, so I don't have to sweat anything in. I think it's after this one. Closed and to see what it does when it opens. It sounds like it opened, I mean closed. Hmm. It sounded like it was doing its steps. I'm not sure why. I thought it was going to turn it on, open it. It's just a test mode, so let's wait for it, and I'm going to restart it to see if it works, since it didn't do what I thought it was going to do. All right, so I put the, the coil. It sounds like it's doing something now. I'm going to take it out of service mode, which is why it's off. When you go into service mode, everything turns off and see if it works. Okay. It's open, I have no pressure. All right. We're gonna have to put this in. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, we're gonna run a recover, a recover unit to get all the refrigerant that's trapped. Because what I did is I closed the two valves on the unit itself, the service valves. And I also hate that those are on the inside now, but you close those two valves, that way I can keep the condenser like with, with whatever charge it has. By itself, I, like I'm just worried about the bottom. But between the condense, the condenser and the evaporator, there's refrigerant trapped. So I'm recovering that refrigerant. It shouldn't take but a few minutes. And that's the only bad thing with these like two-in-one electronic valves. It's a solenoid and a expansion valve in one. And I I can't isolate can't isolate it without the unit running and I can't pop it down because it's it's completely closed.
because normally I could just pump the unit down by bypassing the solenoid or something and work on the expansion valve but uh, this is a little different or like if the unit is pumped down because this one was in defrost the last time it was working and uh, you could have left it cut off let it uh, isolate because the solenoid valve would have closed it off but since it's a two-in-one I'm basically replacing the only valve that closes so that's the only bad thing with these so instead of me just kind of hot swapping it and uh, not worrying about refrigerant, I got to worry about refrigerant that's trapped in the lines and uh, should be ready and we'll just go down there and I'll, I'll leave a hose up here like disconnected to vent and I'll be purging downstairs with nitrogen. There's a stupid screw that you gotta get out. It's facing that way and there's a board here. There's a screw right here. Jesus. Alright, so this is my setup. My main hose is going to be this one and I'm just using the manifold as a secondary just so I can pull both sides down and uh, I'm probably going to have to use what I recovered to put back in because I don't have 404 on me and it's already pretty late. I'm not near a supply house today. So let's see it drop and then we'll get it going. It's all soldered in place. Hooked up my coil with the wiring. We're at about a thousand microns, so I'm gonna let it run a little bit more and then we'll try this out. Managed to get the bracket in there, but it's kind of a pain to put back. So you have no clearance here and the screw is like 
um, embedded in this little strap. You can't fit like a 516 on there that easy. Again, without removing this, I'm not gonna touch this, at least not right now. So upstairs, I, I opened the valves before I, because I didn't get a chance to turn this on yet. And I guess since the valve is normally open, it's actually cooling already. So that's reassuring. I just gotta get it on service mode. And hopefully we have cooling. There it goes. So we're done. Uh, I was hoping it was just a coil. That valve is stuck close. And um, as soon as I put the new one in, it was already like open. And as soon as I let the refrigerant through, it started like cooling. The compressor came on and everything. And then once it did its like delay and all that, it's it's working fine. I just, Wanted to make sure it was working. Uh, I'm not sure why it got stuck closed. That's kind of a pain to deal with because that's a like a two-in-one solenoid expansion valve type deal. And it was brand new. Now I know they protected the valve with uh, what do you call it? Wet rag putty. But who knows what happened. I thought maybe they left the coil on and maybe the coil went bad. But no, it was the actual like valve uh, stuck closed. So I know they protected it because they braid somebody else brazed it in, my coworker. Uh, they did the bottom, I did the condensing unit brazing that in. So he protected it did all the right things and it still gave out and I was also making sure that this the mesh uh, screen wasn't clogged or anything but it was clean everything was good um, I have to leave it with them because they return it for warranty but I'm not I mean it doesn't look good I'm not sure why I did that uh, this is only the second intelligent I've done so this is only the, the second electronic expansion valve I've seen and the other one works fine. The one we, the first one we did, this one, we've had issues. And they ordered one more for a city, like two cities over. And I'm actually going there right now. I thought I was done for the day. It's uh, after six, but I gotta make a stop on my way back. And we're doing, or I'm doing, I'm gonna top off. They asked me if I could top off uh, one of the walk-in coolers that they ordered equipment for. Kind of just keeping it going along until maybe for a few days when we install it uh, and that's going to be the same as this one that i just left hopefully there's no issues on that one i might if it's the same exact one which i think it is i might go in there and strap the fan wires the plugs because in a previous video i showed that those were loose and that's one of the calls i got here and then now this the electronic valve we just got to make sure we protect it again and hopefully we have no issues. But that, I mean, sometimes that happens. I was making sure there was no error on our part, installing it or anything, but like I said, the valve was stuck closed and that was protected, I know for sure. So, hopefully the next 
next one that we do doesn't give us that issue. And I just wanted to show like a troubleshooting video and I thought I really thought it was gonna be just the coil so now you got to see the whole process of, of changing troubleshooting and changing one out so hope you guys enjoyed uh, drop a like leave a comment make sure to subscribe